and hello everyone welcome back to another love 2d tutorial so in the previous tutorial we implemented the invincible player and adding more levels and the levels are procedurally more generated now one thing i did want to show you but i for kind of forgot in a previous tutorial is kind of to show you an example of how we created the spawn before we get to the actual video is if we were to go to the I believe it would be anywhere like in a game or something or just a we, we just spawned the amount of asteroids. Yeah, so here it's the num asteroids. Now when we play the game, if I go love dot and we start the game, new game, then as you can see the asteroid spawns far from us. But how do we know in the previous tutorial what we implemented really works? That the asteroid will never spawn on top of us. Well, when we go here and we change this to maybe 100 asteroids and we run it again new game as you can see we have like a little radius around us where it wouldn't touch us same with if we were to start a new level it will spawn them all around us instead of at us so if we make this 500 for example and then we run it then as you can see there's a little radius where they won't spawn on top of us also, I believe that level 500 is impossible. <laughs> if someone plays this game and they get to level 500, then please show me how you defeat it because that would be very interesting. All right, so yeah, that is just what I wanted to show you just to make sure you know that what we implemented actually works. So first off, one thing we have trouble with is if we actually start the game right now and we just wait to un immune ourselves oh wait we can like start a new level and whatnot okay now we explode okay that's fine let's continue okay now we explode again now we have one life left and now, then i can show you what i mean all right so now when i crash into this asteroid which i just missed And it says game over. Now when we start up a new game, you may have remembered this bug from a previous video. If we new game, then we kind of continue flying off where we left off. So we just continue. If I die here, then it's just going to spawn me back at this exact location in the next game. Therefore, we should create a reset game function. So let's go into main.lua. And right above the love.load. And this could also be in globals if you wanted to. Or you can create a utils.lua file or whatnot. But here we can say function reset. And this will just reset everything for us. And then here we can just say end. So first we can read the save data. So local save data. That is equal to read JSON, and then we can just put in our save.json, or in this case, just save. We don't need to specify JSON. Underneath that, we can then create our player, and that will just spawn a new player or create a new player object with three lives. We can then go game, and we can create a new game object. Save data, we can just pass that in, and then create a new menu object which is equal to menu and you can just pass in the game and the player and then destroy asteroid we can make that equal to false now this destroy asteroid you might have forgotten about it but if we go to our globals.lua and we can actually keep this here then you'll notice here destroy ast just so you know where we are coming from and here we're just making it false again in case you may have forgotten where this is then after that you basically have created a reset function so what we can do now is we can remove this as well as this right here and we can just say reset because this player game and menu and destroy asteroid are all global because they don't have a local in front of them. 
so they can still be used once we use this reset. So now we're going to reset the game once we start it. And whenever we die, we want to reset the game again. To do that, we can go down to where update is. We can scroll all the way down till here where it says game.state.menu. Then we have our menu run click and then our mouse clicked, which is false. Then here we can check if not reset complete. And this is a global variable, but actually we want to make it local to this file, but global in the file. So we can go up here and we can just say local reset complete. And we can make that equal to, and you might want to make this underscore complete or like this, depending on how you name it. When I scripted this video, it was probably like super late at night. And here I have like underscores and here I have Captain Camel case. You should just stay consistent, but I did this late at night, so I'm not consistent anymore. Anyhow, this will tell us when we want to reset the game once we're in the menu state. If it's true, we can just call reset and then reset complete is true. Then here we can say else if game.state.ended. So if the game state is ended, we can say reset complete is equal to false. So if we do die, then the reset complete will become false. Then once we go into the menu state, it will reset the game for us. All right, we can now just save and test this out. This should make sure that once we restart the game, we don't just continue. I'm going to just decrease the amount of lives I have because free is kind of unnecessary. So let's just make that one for now, but you could keep it free. I just don't want to wait forever to be able to die. All right, so let's see what happens. I crash, the game is over. Now what should happen is I should spawn in the middle of the screen again. So new game middle of the screen, level one, only one asteroid. So we have basically successfully reset the game. Cool. We can now just change the player lives back to free. Save that. Next, we can go to globals. Now here we want to write JSON. So we already have read JSON, but now we also want to write the JSON. So I'm going to copy that, paste it, change it from read to write. We can also get the file name, but then we also need to get the data we want to write. Now we are going to get a table and we want to convert that table into JSON so we can store it inside of our save.json because this may look like a table, but this is actually JSON. Okay, so to make sure it works, we can also print it out to the screen if you want to, but we are anyways going to see how it looks once we put it inside of the save.json. So you could print it out to the screen, or you could just look how it looks in the save.json. Okay, so now we can have our local file, and we want to open it, and it's going to be the same file, but this time we want to open it in write mode instead of read mode. Then we want to go here and say, File dot file colon write. And the only reason I'm getting these yellow lines is usually because you'd want to check if this file is nil or not first. If the file is nil, you don't usually want to try to write to it. So if you want to be safe, you can first check if file is equal to nil, then, and then you can just like return or something. Anything here would work. Or you could just do this if the file is not nil. So if it's not nil, then you want to do this. And as you can see now, the yellow lines are gone because we know file is not nil because we checked for it first. So yeah, that's just something you want to maybe take note of. I'm not going to do that right now, but you could, there's nothing wrong with it. It's actually better practice. I'm just not going to do that right now. We can then say, Luna JSON dot encode. So first we used decode. Decode converts JSON into a Lua table, whilst encode converts a Lua table into JSON. 
Then here we can just pass in data, which we get here. They want to close the file and then the function is done. We don't need to return anything. And this will write to our JSON. To make sure it works, we can actually just, yeah, that's already serious. We don't have to change that. We can now go to game because we want to save our high score. So once we boot into the game again, we have our high score there. So you can go to the top and we can create a new function called save game, which is equal to a function that takes in self and it just does write JSON and then the file name, which would be save and then the Lua table. In this case, we want to save the high score and just self dot high score. And this should save the file for us if we get a new high score. Now it won't just call itself. We need to still call this function. So here in game over for right now, we can just say self colon save game and it will save the game for us. Let's try and run this and make sure we actually get that. So we can open this save.json so we can see what happens. We say new game, current high score is zero. But if I were to just go up here, you'll notice my high score also increases, but now we need to make sure it saves. So just give me a second and let's blow up. Now you get a game over or high score is a thousand 110. Okay, we need to see and make sure that that high score is what we see. If I say quit, then as you can see, it updated our file. Now the high score is 110. Okay, now I'm just going to decrease my HP by going here and just saying make it one. Just so I don't constantly have to wait forever in order to finish the game. Now let's say we only get one score here. And as you can see, our high score is 110 now, and our score is 20. So our high score and our score are two different things at this moment. If we crash, we get our game over screen, and we get our save.json, you'll notice our high score didn't change along with it. That is because our high score here never changed. So as long as this high score doesn't change, the high score we save will not change either. That is why we could just do go here and we didn't have to do any checks before because we already do checks to make sure that this high score doesn't go over the normal score unless we get more. For example, if we go here, our high score is 100, 1110. If we try and beat that high score, Okay, so my high score increased as well as my score, as you can see, since my high score has been surpassed. So now both of them will be increasing. And once I explode, then the high score inside of save JSON is also updated. So you'll notice that the high score only changes once the score is higher than the high score. And that is that for today's tutorial. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. And I will see you all again in the next and final Love2D tutorial.